Hi everyone, it's Dr. Ramani and welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism, narcissistic relationships, and frankly healing from these relationships. So today we're going to go back to that personality series where we're taking on your personality. So today, as we continue this personality series, like I said, we're talking about your personality. Let's put theirs on the back shelf for now. We're going to take on a trait called openness. And remember, we're talking about your personality and how it affects your risk for being targeted for these relationships, getting into these relationships, staying in narcissistic relationships, what it's like to stay in them, and sort of the fallout and what happens when they end or these, these relationships disengage. Now today we're going to take on a trait called openness. Openness is the funny one of these traits in this five-factor model. It might be sort of the trickiest. From a scientific perspective, openness is often the one that sort of statistically feels the least stable. But all of that said, let's do a deeper dive into this quality called openness. Now people in that sort of healthy range of openness, moderate, even to the moderate higher, slightly higher level of openness, they're open. This scale is actually formally called openness to experience. And these mid-range, healthy to slightly higher than expected both scores mean a person with a more active imagination, who care about art and other creative expression, who are open to new experiences and seeking out new experiences, like travel, being open to a range of intellectual ideas, being tolerant of ambiguity, and having a willingness to push back on authority and the way things have always been done as well as an openness to exploring one's own feelings or even the feelings of other people. Again, as an aside, if openness gets way too high, like super high, you might find someone who's a, kind of a little bit all over the map and constantly on a grail search for more and more new experiences. They might almost feel unrooted. You may find people who are far, far, far more experimental than the average bear in just about every area of life. Now, is, if openness is very, 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 very low, you find people who are rigidly traditional, rigidly conservative, have absolutely no interest in exploring new ideas or perspectives, could be very moralistic, potentially even judgmental, but definitely not open to new anything. May even feel like a bit of a throwback and perhaps even biased in a very backward and even discriminatory way. But in that healthy level of openness, okay? What does this mean for narcissistic relationships? Let's start with basics. People high in openness are open. So open people are open. And so they may be willing to explore a relationship with anyone who seems interesting. Now that could set up a little bit of a risk here of getting pulled into a narcissistic relationship for a few reasons. A higher in openness person may be so open to different ways of being that they will also <clears throat> that they will also be a bit more tolerant of a narcissistic person's behavior and may be willing to entertain the narcissistic person's worldviews and perspectives even if they are strange or problematic people higher in openness are also curious and because of that may let the relationship keep unfolding even if red flags come up because their exploration and curiosity about something or someone new is, again, so robust. Narcissistic people, especially more grandiose narcissists and even communal narcissists, may actually be very attracted to people who are higher in openness because people higher in openness are interesting. The only narcissistic people who may find people who are higher in openness or in healthy openness off-putting are more of the self-righteous narcissist, the narcissistic people who are very restrictive and moralistic and controlling and judgmental. That subset of narcissistic people will not like the high openness, um, the high openness, or I shouldn't say high, healthy openness people out there. Now, while you're in a narcissistic relationship, again, openness, that trait, may mean that a person is more willing and able to tolerate the bizarre range of beliefs that a narcissistic person may have. Now, this may mean that an open person who's very tolerant may have actually more tolerance for the BS that arises in a narcissistic relationship. Now, there's some interesting quirks in open people, not all, but some. For example, a person higher 
and or moderate to high openness may be willing to hear whatever perspective the narcissistic person has. For example, even if the narcissistic person cheated on them, they might be willing to hear like, what was that about? And as a result, may end up enduring a lot more of the bad behavior in a narcissistic relationship for a longer time. Listen, an open, pers an open person may be open to quirks and trying new things, and open people may, not always, not always, but sometimes may actually also be more sexually open, more open to trying new things in a relationship. And so again, especially in the early phases, may do well with a narcissistic person who is especially, it might be very novelty seeking or very sexually experimental. But an open person is never going to be open to invalidation. There is no openness trait to different perspectives that makes invalidation better, right? But what about, <clears throat> but what about on the back end? Again, a person higher in openness may be more open to the narcissistic person's process and journey. This is not to say that a person higher or moderate high in openness is a capitulator or a codependent, quite the opposite. If a narcissistic relationship ends, people who have healthy levels of openness may, will still be hurt, but the openness could foster a resilience. And remember, nobody, not even a person who has good, healthy, robust levels of openness is open to invalidation. Nobody is. Nobody likes that. Now, people who are lower, like significantly lower in this trait called openness, the ones who are closed off to new ideas and perspectives, who are not curious, who are not tolerant of a new anything, who actually kind of love authority and tradition, by and large, believe it or not, overall, this probably won't work well with a narcissistic person, again, unless it's one of those rigid, self-righteous, moralistic, judgmental narcissistic people. Otherwise, that rigidity might be a little off-putting for many narcissistic people because they may feel judged early in the game. But two sort of narcissists, uh, narcissists who meet, uh, rigid narcissists who meet something like that, it could work. Now, openness is such an interesting quality, and by itself, it doesn't always tell us much. But as it mixes with the other personality patterns, it makes a little more sense. Higher openness and higher agreeableness that we've talked about. That's just a really flexible, curious person who gets along really well with folks. I like that mix a lot. Now, if higher openness happens to co-occur with slightly higher neuroticism, that's not that likely, but it can happen. There may be then someone who is sort of open to a range of perspectives, but still really may struggle with those negative mood states. And despite their openness, may still struggle more when a narcissistic relationship is happening or ends. Now, people who are open, tolerant of ambiguity, flexible, curious, just open to everything are those who are higher, again, and those are in that moderate to high level of openness. Again, my personal bias, it's a personal bias, I think it's a nice style. There's a real mental flexibility and an attitudinal flexibility here. These are typically people who are, they are typically more liberal, more open to hearing new and different voices, having relationships with people who are different than them, who look different, who have different backstories. And unless it gets to be so open that it gets weird and that can happen, that might feel like a very extreme alternative lifestyle thing. And if both people are down with that, it's consensual, then good for them. They found each other. That mid-level of openness is good. I think it's healthy for a personality. And while I do think overall this personality style could be a little tricky when it enters into a relationship with narcissistic personalities because it get, could get a person sucked in. And if you are higher and healthy in openness, you might actually be open to their nonsense. Honestly, outside of narcissistic relationships, the open personality style can really set someone up for a far more interesting and adventurous life. As the wor world evolves, I mean, what, what the funny thing is, is human history has been so same until the industrial revolutions and then with the, with the more technological revolution, I'd say over the last 50 or 60 years, the high openness people are really thriving because think the way we communicate and all the shifts in the world and even how human relationships happen has become so fluid 
that the people who do have more of that openness and flexibility, there's something that works there. Again, they're just more curious. They're like, oh, I'm never going to talk into a little glass screen in my pocket. Are people like, well, that's cool. Let me take a look at that. It's the that's cool people. And like I said, you see very tolerant of difference, very tolerant of ambiguity, love beauty and art. And we'll take a minute and say, oh my gosh, let's isn't the universe a beautiful thing? And we'll look at the stars. There's a really, I would say, magical quality about people who have those really healthy, moderate high levels of, um, of openness. And again, the problem is, I think that's also very intriguing to a fair chunk of narcissistic people. But you, you, you healthy levels of openness people, there's a little bit of a resilience in you. You might be able to be circumspect. If you have a little bit of neuroticism in there, it might make these relationships tougher. But folks out there with the, the solid levels of openness and those higher levels of agreeableness, whew, come find me if you ever see me at a coffee shop. I'd love to talk to you. Thanks again.